Hello, my friends. This video and the next video I'm going to produce are probably going to be the most exciting, the most original, the most mind boggling video you could ever hope to get from me. Um, you read the title, and this FedEx driver, of course, is me. So I am still, it's been three days now, I'm still very confused, I'm still shocked. And I'm going to be doing the best of my recollection to tell you what happened on the early night last Thursday. Thursday. So first, and uh, very, very important, please, please, please realize that at 70 years old, I have better things to do than to make up UFO stories. All that I'm going to tell you truly happened to me. First, uh, as you all know, a few weeks ago, there was a shortage of um, class A driver to go all over the country. So I became an essential because I do have the skills. Uh, the job pays good money, so I can buy a new boat or a new truck. But uh, my initial intent was to help some uh, police friends that I have over there, some nurses, client friends, student God knows what, that we have in the East Coast. So I decided to help both physically and spiritually through those videos and, and do my best to fight coronavirus. Um, little did I know that the strong urge that I had to drive a truck uh, was far, far beyond my expectations of suffering yet another absolutely mind-boggling abduction. Now, if there is a newsletter that you must read, it is that one, because you have graphics. And I always express myself much better when I write, because I have the time to think and recollect all that transpired this tragic night, Thursday morning. So FedEx told me, um, because of all this, uh, you know, revolution going on in, in various cities, so uh, we're going to be working originally. So the routes are going to be, uh, you know, Vegas, they're going to be Albuquerque, uh, might be uh, Farmington, uh, you know, El Paso. So they sent me to Vegas on Wednesday night. Uh, I was to leave um, around uh, 12 o'clock at night. So I load my two trailers, do the paperwork, and on my way I am by myself, solo. As I drove, I took, uh, if I recall, the 202 that led me to 10, the 10 led me to the 303, the 303 led me to the 60, the 60 to the 93 North, 93 North, of course, high 40 going west, and on the way to Vegas to the FedEx hub. That's the route that I had to take. So I took it. And I, I know this road very, very well. I took it so many times. Even when I got married with my family, it is beautiful. It is definitely a road trip you must take if you have never done it before. It's picturesque, it's a lot of rocks, different desert. So, because a lot of people go killed, you see a lot of crosses, or at least I did over the years, see a lot of crosses on the side of the road because it's tortuous. It's a small road, so there is a lot of construction going on there. They are enlarging the highway. They are making it uh, more safe because there's a lot of rigs going through this. To Vegas or LA. So, and each time you have a construction zone, uh, 
you know, you have to pay attention of your speed. That truck is rigged at 65 miles per hour. Cannot go faster than that unless, you know, the road goes down and you have to be careful when you have all together 80,000 pounds in your hands. So you have always signs that tells you, uh, you, you know, reduce your speed, 55, 45, 35, and in some area, 25. So I just did the trip, dropped the loads in Las Vegas hub and came back. Absolutely no problems. Everything was wonderful. And the next day, my supervisor says, Louis, you need to go back there. And that was uh, Thursday early morning. So we had the hub at 11 o'clock, then hook up your trailers, do the paperwork, do the electronic work, and then, you know, go solo again. Yeah, it was an easy ride for me. So I took off. And uh, as I was uh, driving, I like to listen to George Norris. Sometimes I can catch the show depending where I am. And sometimes be, because I get into the wildness, I'm losing the signal. So I was listening to George and to his guests. And they were talking about uh, famous uh, abductions and contactees and why there was no many of them anymore. And, uh, they were talking about all sorts of things. So now and then the, the signals was cutting off and I was kind of pissed off. So I thought maybe I can, you know, take on his replay because after two o'clock he replays it. So uh, I was driving and I was listening to them, catching a little part of the discussion before he went completely off. And then if I lost the signal completely. So I start to go my mind, you know, when you drive on uh, alone, um, your mind is going all over the place. You think about your past, your friends, your current situation, your dreams, your hopes, your everything. You're, you're in your own world. Um, and I was, I recall very, very well. Uh, as soon as the signal was lost, I was thinking, I said, gee, man, I had, five UFOs experiences that many of you have watched on my um, uh, movies on Amazon Prime. And I thought, uh, you know what? I'm due again. When is that going to be? What's that going to be? Little did I know. Little did I know that was the night. Um, and I thought... My own mind, I thought after so many UFOs experience, maybe the ETs would pick me to introduce um, you know, humanity to our space, brother. You know, anybody, everybody has thought this type of thought. Um, no, any thoughts as far as ETs are concerned. So I was just thinking, that's my last thought before it happened. I was driving 65 miles per hour. It was pitch black. I had my high beam on to make sure I could see any sign that I may have missed. And I was thinking, um, so how far am I from high 40? And as I think that, man, I see a sign on the right side of the road saying uh, high 40, 16 miles. And um, as I said, I was driving fast, pitch black, Height beam, nobody in front, nobody behind, no construction, no speed limit. And oh my God, in the middle of the highway, you have, you have, you have the other side of the highway going south on 93. And I was going north on 93. And then the highway, it's, a, it's two roads. It's a small, small highway, two roads. And all of a sudden, these two roads, Turned like a, a Y, like a fork. I said, what the hell is that? I didn't see any sign, no speed limit, no warning whatsoever. And all of a sudden, I am about 
to either take left or right. I don't know what the hell is going on. All I can do is to jump on my brakes, try to slow down that, you know, nearly 80,000 pounds of equipment on the highway, trying to slow it down so that I don't flip the trailers behind me. Because when you drive a double, any jerky movement, your trailer is flipping, you're gone. And you might kill yourself. So uh, I, I managed to slow down the rig and I, I could only turn right because I was on the right side. And I said, oh my God, what the hell is this? And as I was picking up my speed, the next thing I know, I am on Highway 40 going west. My friends, there is no words to in the English language to explain how confused and shocked I was because I was expecting the overpass that I took the night before and many times before that. There is no way in the world for me and that big rig to land on high 40 unless I take that overpass, claims a little bit, you take the overpass and then you turn left and then that leads you into I-40. That is the normal thing that I always did, not on Thursday night, early morning, around two o'clock in the morning. So I thought, okay, okay, you know, keep driving, keep my marble together, but I was really, really shocked. It's 2, 2.30 in the morning. Who do I call? Of course, my wife. So I was all upset. I was all confused. And, you know, she was telling me, I need, you know, get control of yourself. I mean, be careful when you're driving. You're on the highway now. It's, it's empty. There's nobody there. Uh, and I explained to her what happened. I was so emotional. Then she helps me. So all along, it was very hard for me to focus on, on, on my work because this is, this is overwhelming. And unless you go through it yourself, you cannot understand me. You just can't. You got to go through it yourself like it did happen five times before. Now, I thought maybe during the day, uh, when I was sleeping and recuperating for my next shift, maybe um, some construction worker did something there that, but then it's impossible. It's impossible for a fork to be in the middle of a highway, especially when you have no warning on your sign or no speed limit. Now, some people are going to say, well, Dr. Drew, you're spacing out big time. Well, not my friend. I was not spacing out because if I space out one second with 80,000 pounds in my hand at 65 miles per hour, or I kill somebody or kill myself. So I was fully, completely, entirely conscious. And of course, the ET did it for a very specific purpose. So I thought on my way back, it'll be daytime. So I'm going to really go slow. Okay, and then I'm going to look. I'm going to look if that fork is still there or if there is a road or if there is anything because the entire area disappeared, was not there. In a fraction of a second, I was on Highway 93 going north and I landed on Highway 40 west in a second. So, I, th I thought, I'm going to call my good friend, Tom. Tom is my webmaster. He's a very close friend. He's like me, an Aquarius, so he understands everything I'm going through since the get-go. He's been there backing me up. He's a guardian angel sent by God. And he's also a master in security, works for the government in high security, and he's taking care of my uh, website. Uh, and since he works with me, I've never been hijacked. So my website is extremely safe, put it this way. So thanks, Tom. But I was so confused that I have two Tom. 
I call Tom Deinheiser instead of Tom, first time. And Tom Deinheiser is uh, also a very close friend of mine, good friend, and he's George Norrie producer. So on the other hand, there is a sleepy Tom. He's the last guy to call <laughs> because he works all night. But I was so emotional. I didn't pay attention. I just started to go, oh my gosh, this and that. And I was talking to Tom. Then he was listening on the other side. And finally, I recognized his voice. I said, oh my gosh, what have I done? I woke him up. So he's got to get pissed off of me. I don't think Tom realized the depth of the emotions, the confusion, the, the shocking moment that I went through a few hours earlier. And uh, okay, so, you know, politely, he told me, let me go to sleep. And then that was it. Then I finally talked to Tom. And uh, Tom helped me to keep my uh, marble together because you know what, my friends, you know, as I said earlier, there is no English words to classify, to qualify, to or explain the tremendous emotion and, and shock and confusion that you are experiencing. It's okay because it happened to me before, don't get me wrong, but not with a freaking 80,000 pound rings, a tractor and a trailer, two trailers loaded. Uh, tells you the capabilities of uh, those entity. What the hell happened to me? Still a mystery to me. So after that, uh, I realized that anytime you jump on your brakes, you automatically stop the video. You know, it's just for uh, uh, you know security purpose, legal purpose, accident purpose. You know, FedEx is a very large corporation, and uh, uh, they make sure that their drivers uh, spy inside out. Yeah, so I don't smoke, I don't drink. I had my rest. I was totally perfect that early th uh, Thursday morning. However, um, it, 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 they want to know. They, they should know. They want to know what happened to me and their track, and especially what the hell I'm carrying because thousands upon thousands of dollars behind me. So I talked to my supervisor, and the first thing I said, please, Joel, uh, we close, you know, don't think I'm crazy, man. Please take me very seriously. He says, what's going on with you? I said, well, um, after two o'clock last night, uh, I was on high 93 going north. He said, yeah, I know the route very well. And then you go on 40. So you take the overpass. I said, yes, the only thing is the overpass was not there. And I was jumped from one highway to the other in a matter of a second. And I, and it's very, very confusing. It's very traumatic to me. So please don't, don't laugh. And he says, well, the good news is you have set up the camera. So I said, is there any way we could get that video? He says, yeah, 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 it should be no problem. So um, in two or three days, which means maybe tomorrow after tomorrow, during this shocking, unusual UFO explosion, earthquake, mind-boggling, cosmic news uh, timing during this SOS to the world or uh, shocking windows, this is when I'm going to get a video. No accident into the cosmic code. Absolutely no accident for all this to happen to me. So we're going to be watching the video together. But I worry about three things, as mentioned and written in the newsletter. The first one is... What if the video is actually captivating real extraterrestrials where you have the undeniable, solid, concrete proof that they are extraterrestrials that are that humane? What if there is a flying saucer landed somewhere? I do not know where I've been. Didn't know how long really. It was just a fraction of seconds. Okay. I was so confused. So what if they see that and instead of getting to my boss and me, they decide to call the FBI or the authority? Well, we cannot give that to the world. That become another Roswell incident. Lying conspiracy. That's a worry number one. Number two worry that I have is what if the ET decide to erase that video or that perfect moment? 
But again, what is the purpose to have me fully conscious driving a used truck and two, two remorks, two trailers behind me? Knowing, because these entities are master of matter, they're extremely smart. They know there is a camera which is looking inside and outside as they are doing their business. So what would be the purpose for them to erase that section? It's a big mystery. Third, remember my last thought, what if after all this UFOs experience, I am the chosen one, okay? And I'm the one who has to introduce the reality, undeniable reality of extraterrestrials. Oh my God, my life as I know it will change. And I don't think I'd like to lose my privacy. But this is what it is, you know. I'm not making anything up. We're just waiting. We're just waiting. Waiting for that very precious video. This is why the title, I'm not lying in telling you that was abducted and everything was caught on camera. The problem is, will I get access to the recording that was taken by that camera? on that FedEx track. Well, so at that point, you know, that's what it is. That means also that um, my UFO movie on Amazon Prime, Prime is not complete. And there's something else I have to let you know. Because I believe you deserve the truth. You deserve the fact. There is more. There is more to what I just told you. And there is only one person, actually two, who knows the rest of the story. That is Tom, my website manager and my wife. It is going to be absolutely very, very difficult for any of you to rationalize, to digest, to accept another incredible experience that took place with me. I don't think you need more extravagancy, more mind-boggling, more incredible thing that happens the very next day. But no, once you digest this, I'm, I will tell you, because again, you know, you're my supporters from all over the world and you deserve the truth and I will not hold it. I'm holding it now because it is too much for me. How is it going to be for you? You're just listening. I, believe me, I don't drink, I don't smoke and I cannot space out when I'm driving a huge truck in two trailers. There's a purpose behind all this. I still don't know. I'm waiting for the vital movie, the camera. Like everything that transpires is on that camera. Camera doesn't, whatever excuse you may have, as far as I'm concerned, tripping out, whatever. It's impossible when you drive to trip out unless you want to die. That, that video won't lie. And I'm as anxious as you are to know the rest of the story. And I'll let you know in time, my good friends. Now, this, uh, my predictive UFO legacy probably is going to get sharper. As Draco tells me, all that happened to you, it's not an accident. Maybe it's to point out these upcoming shocking windows. It's going to be maybe a little bit different, unusual, shockingly different than all the others that I had giving you in previous SOS to the world windows. So pay attention, I'm expecting a large earthquake, explosion, tornado, I'm exploding, nature devastative forces, cosmic news, UFOs, development. Uh, I'm, uh, anything unusual, shocking will happen to you. Be prepared because this is not the main news now. This is you, it's personal. That's why you're watching me. You pay attention, like I told you last time, okay, and you will read it in the newsletter. 
critical for you to read that newsletter in detail and see the, the, the area where it disappear, me and the track. I told you to be ready for earthquakes on that very specific day. And again, we had humongous earthquakes. You, you read all the details in that newsletter. Lastly, uh, I want to thank many, many of you. Jesus, I mean, I reached my goal. Over 50, over 50 people have given me five stars. And um, of course, you have uh, uh, young souls, those who, regardless how much I'm taking them to that cosmic wisdom, uh, they are. Uh, so it's sad reality they're so infected that they cannot help themselves to be negative and to find something wrong not about a moving for me trying to hurt my integrity so they give me one star they give me two stars and of course my supporters are there to answer them please if you do so do it intelligently do it decently do it humanly because they are in spirit are growing like i did with uh this guy who gave me one point in saying this old bull. I'm a liar, I'm not a doctor, whatever it is. Uh, I said, may God and you guardian angel help you free your spirit from those negative entities. This is how you answer intelligently, positively, with love. And understand that they are in the process of growing. I'm a soul doctor. I teach who is who in America. Psychiatrist, psychologist, NASA student, people from all walks of life. This young soul has not yet realized there's a big difference between education and intelligence. And when you have a doctor, a psychiatrist from an accredited school that tells you, Dr. Turi, I have learned more with you in your crash course in Sedona than seven years in an accredited college. That uh, tells you what a unevolved soul cannot understand or realize. So you need to go where they are and you need to bring them up. So don't fight. And, and I can see that many of you have answers. Those two guys are trying to tarnish my popularity. My good heart, my cosmic wisdom, my integrity. And, and, and they have done it in a very intelligent, loving, educational way. So if you do not agree with what you read, when they give me one star or two stars, or you have a little button, just report it. We already got rid of uh, a couple of them that were really, really nasty. It had nothing to do with the movie. And it was pretty obvious that uh, these people are insecure or the young souls and they nurture an inferiority complex, God knows what. So as a supporter, just report them and try to keep my record clean because um, there is more, there is more as far as my mission is concerned and it's gonna become more and more obvious, I feel. So my good friend, pay attention to this upcoming SOS to the world shocking window realize that you are going to uh, undergo yourself some surprise. You're going to hear friends or people around you telling you things that are outside of the ordinary, such as what's happening to me. And as always, if you think and if you feel, because that little voice in you will never lie to you, that I have something that's real, and believe me, it's real, share it. Please be part of the solution. Help us beat those nasty entities up and up to the Draconis. They've reached me again. I've been touched by, I call it the divine because I cannot understand it. And I know from the bottom of my heart, and Draco told me, these were not the reptilians. They were the Draconis. Uh, either they were trying to uh, do something else to me to prepare me for the next step. Or maybe they were trying to prove to me that they are still with me because I was expecting. And I told you in previous video, I'm due again somewhere, somehow, sometimes I don't know. Okay. And it happened twice. I just tell you one. And in time, I tell you the other one once I have the video. All right. I'd like to finish today by um, picking up a card. 
I don't know what it is. I'm not looking. You see my hands, okay? I'm picking up the cards, and we're going to look at the energy surrounding this um, uh, this experience. Are you ready? Here it is. <laughs> How many of you have watched my previous video? Even Tom, my webmaster, picked up this card. This will be the sixth consecutive time. What the heart of picking up out of 32 cards, picking up this card six times in a row. This is Aquarius. This is me. Aquarius is those born in February. Travis Walton has the moon in Aquarius. That's why he, he was magnetized by the divine, by the ETs. Aquarius is a soul who has to go into the universe, understand and translate God tools, all the stars, which are much more than dead rock hanging out there for the sake of beauty. Then the Aquarius advanced soul, the new age of Aquarius, love, peace, understanding, space, brother, technology, the future of humanity, humanitarianism, has to put the knowledge into the jar. And the water pouring out of the jar coming from the sun of Aquarius is me, Dr. Turing, or you, any one of you who has the world of Aquarius, sharing that cosmic wisdom, sharing your own unique wisdom to the world. That is a perfect omen, meaning also there is hopes for the future of humanity. Understand that right now, as of May the 15th, the tail of the dragon has moved into the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius rules foreign people. Sagittarius rules minority, the Indians, the black community. This tail of the dragon is creating havoc and it was led and is still manipulated by the reptilians to create all sorts of negativity out there. There is gang leaders, there is people. How many of you, of us, have not been touched by the police? I've been touched by the cops many times, but my experience has always been positive because I'm smart. I don't challenge authority, I'm respectful, and I don't end up bitten. I don't do drugs, I don't do anything illegal. So um, you can only uh, respond to a situation because of your experiences, your education, your intelligence, and of course your stars. So what's going on with the tail of the dragon in Sagittarius is to completely and entirely restructure uh, the minority, foreigners, foreign lands, people of colors. And... Um, knowing that our president was born with the same nasty tail of the dragon in Sagittarius, anything related to foreigners, foreign land, foreign people, our foreign friends, religion and the law. Sagittarius was religion and the law. And having your own president, you know, showing the Bible is right on his tail. And then you have Sagittarius was the codification of other laws which are being completely, as far as the police is concerned, being restructured. But nothing, nothing to what's coming when the tail of the dragon is going to be moving in the deadliest, most powerful, most intense sign of all, Scorpio, 18 months from today. This is why you should put your hand on my 2020 Nostradamus dragon forecast. You get to 2019 for free then you could see that everything that's happening, everything that I'm mentioning right now was predicted last August. And that include, of course, the COVID virus, the uh, restructure of the airline industry, um, the uh, restructure also of the auto industry. It's going to be a year of wind and fire. Okay. So I'm expecting a, a very busy hurricane destructive season, particularly during my SOS to the world deadly windows. It is crucial for you if you feel that I have something, and believe me, I do. And that does not remotely involve my ego because I'm all here to help you the best way I can, physically and spiritually. Please share my message, become a VIP, become a Patreon, show your support to Dr. Turing. 
yeah, maybe uh, I join and accept my good friend Daryl proposition to start my own radio show. Uh, but I'm too busy for now. I still have to do what I have to do with FedEx. As long as my back is taking the hit, it's becoming more and more difficult each passing day. I need surgery on my back. And I have a big, huge belt to keep it together. It's pretty, pretty hard. But I got to keep going to reach my wishes, to help other people, physically and spiritually, to get my boat so we can enjoy the lakes in the arid zone and enjoy life. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing to me. It must be amazing to you too. All right, my good friend, we come at the end of this video. Uh, please go and rate my movies. Answer those guys intelligently and with love and respect. But if you don't agree with them, then help me to fulfill my mission. Until then, may God bless all of you and be safe on this shocking window because it's going to be very unusual. Talk to you again sometime. Bye-bye.